Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. We will start in just a few moments. I would like to remind you that if you need Spanish interpretation this evening, please click on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and select Spanish. If you need ASL interpretation, our ASL interpreter has been spotlighted for your convenience, and he will be visible throughout the presentation. Thank you for joining us. We are going to start in just a couple of minutes. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Family Technology Webinar. We are going to go ahead and get started. I would like to remind you that if you need Spanish interpretation this evening, to please click on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen and select Spanish. If you need ASL interpretation tonight, our ASL interpreter is spotlighted and you will see him throughout tonight's presentation. Tonight, um, our panelists are going to discuss um, science for grades K through 8. My name is Larissa Pineda. I am an Instructional Services Specialist with the Department of Innovation and Learner Engagement, and I will be your host this evening. I'm going to let the panelists go ahead and introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Ashley Fulmer, and I'm the science coordinator. And I'm Heather McDonald, the secondary science TOSA. And the third member of our team is Shannon Dadless, the elementary staff development specialist. But unfortunately, she is not able to join us this evening. Thank you, ladies. Tonight, our panelists are going to share some information with you about the Next Generation Science Standards. They will be discussing Mystery Science, which is for grades kindergarten through fifth, and Amplify Science, which is grades six through eight. They will also share some strategies and information on how you can support your student with science at home and keep them interested in learning. Our presenters will pause uh, throughout the presentation to answer your questions. So if you have any questions at all this evening, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit those questions and our panelists will be happy to answer them.
I'm going to go ahead and let them get started. Hi again, my name is Ashley Fulmer and I am the science coordinator. I want to start with a brief introduction to the Next Generation Science Standards or NGSS. The NGSS are K-12 science content standards that set the expectations for what students should know and be able to do. Within the NGSS, there are three distinct and equally important dimensions to learning science. Number one, the core ideas, which is what we want students to know. Number two, the practices, which is what we want students to be able to do. And number three, the cross-cutting concepts, which is how we want students to think. Each dimension works with the other two to help students build a cohesive understanding of science over time. In the past, we really only focused on one of these dimensions, which was knowing those core ideas. This meant that science instruction focused on learning facts, memorizing vocabulary, and watching teachers conduct demonstrations, which students often repeated afterwards. Today, we want students to be able to work together to solve problems and make sense of real world phenomena using all three of the dimensions. The NGSS enables teachers to offer all students interactive instruction that promotes analysis and interpretation of data, critical thinking, problem solving, and connections across science disciplines. So what does NGSS instruction look like in the classroom? Well, NGSS instruction begins with the teacher introducing a phenomenon. And a phenomenon is simply an observable event that is chosen to promote student inquiry and add relevance to the science classroom. Then students start to generate questions and begin to wonder why the phenomenon occurred. Students will use the three dimensions that we talked about earlier to make sense of the phenomenon or solve a problem. Through all of this, students are engaging in collaborative conversations, reading articles, and experiencing hands-on investigations or simulations. Now, before we dig into the curriculum, I want to introduce the broad topics that should be taught in each grade level. The topics are categorized into three areas or domains, earth and space science, life science, and physical science. The students will receive instruction in all three of these areas or domains in what we call an integrated model. So you can see, for example, in kindergarten, students will learn weather patterns for earth and space science, plant and animal needs for life science, and forces and interactions or pushes and pulls for physical science. Middle school also follows the integrated model where students experience earth and space science standards, life science standards, and physical science standards every year. I want to point out that sixth grade is grouped in the middle school band because this is the way that it is written in the standards. You may also notice that some of the topics are similar to those in K to five, and that is by design. The standards are arranged such that from elementary through high school, students have multiple opportunities to build on the knowledge and skills gained during each grade. By revisiting important concepts and expanding their understanding of connections across scientific domains. Each year, you will start to notice that your student will begin to form deeper connections between concepts previously learned. For example, weather. In kindergarten, students learn weather is the combination of sunlight, wind, snow, or rain. In third grade, students learn patterns of typical weather conditions. And in sixth grade, students learn that complex interactions determine local weather patterns and influence climate. So let's dig into the programs. 
First is Mystery Science, which is our K-5 instructional program. Many of our students are enjoying Mystery Science lessons. They come in a video format with opportunities to wonder and discuss phenomena that students can relate to. Every lesson begins with Doug, the Mystery Science teacher, sharing a question that he is wondering about. Students get to wonder too. To give you an idea of how the lessons begin, here is a snippet of the first grade lesson, Why Do Birds Have Beaks? Hi, it's Doug. Do you have a favorite animal like this girl has here? Sometimes people ask me what my favorite animal is, and it's always so hard for me to say. I like turtles a lot. But the more I learn about animals, the more amazing animals I find out about. Like when I first became a science teacher, I got a pet chameleon like this. Now check this out. Look at how a chameleon's eyes move. It can look in all directions. And when a chameleon walks, they look so strange. Those feet they have are actually better suited for gripping onto tree branches than walking on the ground. But my favorite thing about my chameleon was this. When you put an insect in there with it, like a cricket, that's maybe a chameleon's favorite food. Watch what it does. Oh, wow. Now let's watch that one more time in slow motion. Oh, you see that? A chameleon's tongue is longer than its own body. Now look at this little animal. It's a fish, but not all fish are the same. This one is called an archer fish, and you've got to see what it can do. It's a little hard to tell, but there's a bug on the branch up here. Okay, watch what happens. Oh, did you see that? Watch it again. It squirted water out at the bug, and then when the bug fell into the water, it went up and ate it. Wow. Over the next few mysteries, we're going to see lots of interesting animals. One of the things I want to convince you of is that it's almost as if animals have superpowers. Some of them are able to do amazing things. Animals don't do amazing things just to impress us, though. Notice how these animals we just saw, the chameleon and the archer fish, were doing amazing things in order to get food, one of the needs that all animals have in common. There isn't just one way to get food, though. Different animals have different ways of doing it, sometimes involving special body parts. The chameleon has a tongue that's really sticky and really long. The archer fish has a mouth that can act like a hose or a faucet, spraying water in a little jet. This is one way to think about animals. Whenever you see an animal, ask yourself, does it have any special parts it uses to get food? Let's look at a few other animals and see what parts they use. So each lesson continues with videos and questions to discuss like this one. How are these beaks different? Your student might discuss with you or other students online some of the questions in the lessons like this one. It is important to let your student explore their ideas and wonderings and not just give them the answer. Each mystery science lesson also has an activity that allows students to have a chance to experiment and find the answers out for themselves. Here is a photo from back before, before the shutdown of students experimenting with drinking straw beaks to find out how birds pick up food. Your student will have opportunities to do these hands-on activities at home too. In general, our elementary students question and observe things, share their ideas with others by talking and writing, and figure things out on their own. 
they may need you to talk with as they think deeply about the questions in the lesson, since uh, science in elementary is about thinking and figuring out, not memorizing facts. So where will your student find these lessons? Some of our K2 students are using a program called Seesaw to deliver these lessons to their students. Students click the picture to watch the video, then follow the directions to share their thoughts and what they have figured out. By clicking the green add response button, they can add drawings, text, videos, or audio recordings. A second way teachers are assigning mystery science is through the printed packets that were distributed at the school sites. We have printed all the handouts and worksheets students might need to complete the lessons. Students can take a picture of their completed pages and turn them in. The top corner of the sheet shows which lesson it is. A third way teachers are instructing mystery science is through Google Classroom. Teachers can link the lesson video and make the worksheets digital and typable on their Google Classroom site. Students can do their lesson and turn it in through Google Classroom. We know our students are truly enjoying learning science by sharing their ideas and staying curious about science in the world around them through mystery science. Thank you, Ashley. That was great information and I really enjoyed the video. It was quite engaging. Right now, we are going to open it up for questions. If anybody has some questions for our panelists, if you'd like to know a little bit more about mystery science or about the NGSS standards, we will um, leave it open for questions for a couple of minutes. A reminder, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask those questions. And then we will uh, continue with the presentation. Um, we do have a question about materials, Ashley. Do you need any special materials to complete the mystery science activities? That's a great question, Larissa. Thank you. Most of the activities only require the uh, materials in the packet, so just the printouts, or maybe some things you might find around the house, like colored pencils or crayons to color some of the pictures in. If a mystery lesson requires additional materials, we've created demonstration videos for those. So students can see what the activity is um, and make the, um, and can make sense of what's actually happening. So we don't tell them the answer, but they're able to collect data and analyze it. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Are elementary students engaged in science activities every day or do they have science homework every day? Um, Mystery Science is designed so that there is one lesson a week. So students should be getting one lesson a week. Um, that should take about anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour to go through all of the videos, the discussion questions, and uh, the little activity. Thank you. Uh, parents, if you have any other questions, please feel free to uh, drop them in using that Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. 
and our panelists will be happy to answer those questions for you. We will uh, leave questions open for in about one more minute and then we'll continue on with our presentation. So please feel free to ask our panelists anything you'd like to know about science. I am so sorry, everyone. I didn't realize I had myself on mute still. Um, let me go ahead and take care of these questions. There was a mystery science activity that required my child to print a worksheet of a spider, but I don't have a printer. Um, so is there perhaps something uh, the child can do as an alternative? So I believe that is one of the mini lessons that Mystery Science also provides. So Mystery Science has shorter lessons that go along with season, the seasonals, um, like holidays or, you know, different seasons. Um, so for that, if they can, I would always recommend a student to just draw what they need on a sheet of paper, on a blank sheet of paper. can still complete the activity. Great, thank you, Ashley. Um, our next question is a clarification question. Um, are you saying that students only get science once a week? That is really up to the decision of the teacher. The way the mystery science program is designed is for one lesson per week. But like I just mentioned, there are all a bunch of mini lessons that um, teachers can also add in if they have the time. In addition to that, a lot of teachers are using that time to do other activities for history or art or music. So that time gets shared across those uh, content areas. Great, thank you for the uh, clarification there. Great uh, questions, everybody. All right, at this time, we are going to go ahead and continue through our presentation. Of course, if you have any questions about what's being presented tonight, feel free to use that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and the presenters will have some time at the end of tonight to answer those additional questions. Hello again, I'm Heather McDonald, the Secondary Science TOSA, and I'm going to talk about our sixth through eighth grade curriculum, which is Amplify Science. And I'd like to show you some features of this program. Amplify Science is a dynamic program because it centers every unit around real-world phenomena rather than science concepts and vocabulary. Take, for example, this eighth grade unit, Force and Motion. Students are introduced to the unit through a problem they must solve 
and they take on the role of student physicists working with the Universal Space Agency. Watch this short video that the students experience. All right, I've got systems up. Let's get eyes on the pod in the station. Copy that. Looking good. Registering expected speed. Target is ready to dock. Anna, long time no see. So how's asteroid research going? What's the name of your project again? Oh, the Asteroid Collection Mission. I'll call it the ACM for short. You got any good samples yet? Actually, I'm heading there right now because we have a pod ready to dock. What did you get last time? We got some dust and bits of ice. Would you mind if I took a peek? Actually, we don't have the samples here on Earth. Really? Well, how do you study them? Let me show you really quick. Our pod spacecraft is based at an unmanned space station. So it goes out to collect samples from the asteroid field. And then it flies back to dock and delivers them. Robotic tools in the space station allow us to analyze and photograph everything. That is so cool. Oh, I'd love to hear more about that. Well, the pod is docking right now. I'll let you know if we get any samples. Good luck. Cool. What, no coffee for us? Hmm. Very funny. OK, this is Dr. Anna Gonzalez in Mission Control. Permission to start docking protocol. Permission granted. OK, go for it, Greg. Docking protocol activated. OK, 20 seconds. Nice and steady, just like last time, okay? Use the thrusters to reduce speed. Copy that. Firing thrusters. Okay, almost there. No, what I... Okay, video's out. Somebody talk to me. Oh, we've lost all communication with the pod. Okay, try to reconnect. Start up backup systems. Backup system online, still no contact. Oh, we're back on. Okay, what's the status? Something's not right. It should have docked at the station by now. Yeah, I can see it. It's going the wrong way. It's going away from the space station. Something must have happened during those seconds when we lost contact. Okay, Greg, I'm going to need you to run a full diagnostic on the space station and the pod. Everyone else, I need you to reconstruct what happened in those missing seconds. I'm talking to the director. The goal of the unit is for students to figure out why this mission failed. Students will spend several weeks trying to figure out what went wrong and coming up with ideas. Each idea will be tested carefully so students can gather multiple pieces of evidence. In order for students to make sense of the phenomenon, they engage in several different types of activities. The key to each of these activities is that they are student-centered. Students are responsible for figuring out while the teacher is responsible for guiding the learning. Vocabulary is embedded within activities so that it is relevant. During each unit, students participate in activities such as online simulations that can be manipulated in many ways, active reading that unpacks the science concepts and encourages questioning. Hands-on activities, so students can physically manipulate variables. Modeling tools that allow students to demonstrate their learning. Peer discussions and collaboration to compare evidence and revise thinking. And scientific writing, in which it is expected that students cite specific evidence to support or refute claims. The beauty of each Amplify unit is that with every activity, every simulation, every reading, students always come back and relate new learning experiences to the phenomenon. In this sense, students build their own foundation of knowledge by figuring out the problem in pieces that are constructed together. And by the end of the unit, students are expected to write scientific arguments supporting claims through evidence and scientific reasoning. If you would like to see the Amplify Science platform 
and your student's work, ask your child to log in to their Clever account. There you will find the orange Amplify icon under Curriculum Applications. When Amplify opens, you have the option of viewing any of the units available to your student according to their grade level. Each unit is broken down into chapters, and the ribbon at the top of the page will tell you which unit and chapter you are in. The chapters are further broken down into lessons, which are named as the chapter number, point, lesson number. When you click on each lesson, you can see all of the activities your student is doing. Amplify assignments can be turned in by your student in three different ways, and how the work is collected is determined by your child's teacher. Note that teachers can combine any of these options together, so be sure to connect with your child's teacher to understand their preferred format. One way students can submit work is through Google Classroom. Teachers can assign and link Amplify activities directly in this option. Another option is for students to submit work directly in the Amplify platform. To see student work, click on the three lines icon at the top le left of the page and then click on My Work. The third option is for students to work directly in their investigation notebooks. These physical notebooks have been provided by your child's school. So let's talk about some ways that you can support your student in science. As you can see, it may be very different from what you experienced as a student. No matter what grade level, encourage your student to discuss their thoughts. What do they notice? What do they wonder? What do they, why do they think that? The important thing is to let kids figure things out as the lessons guide them step-by-step step to discovering the answers. And you can keep encouraging their curiosity by having kids go outside, take a nature walk, or just see what is happening in your own backyard. Indoors, students can take broken items, such as that old calculator or VCR that doesn't work anymore, have them take it apart and put it back together. Have them build with Legos or blocks, or conduct chemistry experiments by helping you with recipes or baking. We hope that you and your student can keep the world around you and have fun. Thank you, Heather. Those are some really great ideas for engaging our students with science. Families, if you have any additional questions, perhaps you saw something in the Amplify materials, um, please let us know using the Q&A buttons at the bottom of your screen, and we'll take a few minutes to answer questions.
A reminder that if you are using a tablet or an iPad to watch tonight's presentation, the Q&A button might be in a different part of the screen, but you can still go ahead and click and provide us with some feedback or ask our panelists a question. And we'll leave it open for just another moment. Um, if you have any questions either about mystery science or Amplify, or perhaps you would like to see how to access the materials again on your student's device. I did want to let you know that our presentations have been recorded. If you would like to watch them at a later date, they will be available on the RUSD uh, website. That's riversideunified.org. So if you wanted to uh, watch tonight's presentation again, or share it with other members of your family or friends that were not available to attend tonight, you can find that at riversideunified.org under the Family Technology Resources tab. And we have quite a few um, other uh, resources and materials available for you under that tab. So please check it out. If there are no additional questions for our panelists, I do wanna go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much everybody for joining us this evening. We do have some additional uh, family technology webinars coming up. Uh, next week, we will be talking about the Maravillas curriculum. So that is the uh, Spanish language arts program for students who are involved in the DLI program. Um, on November 12th, we will be having some information about Dreambox, which is uh, to support elementary mathematics. And then on November 19th, our secondary math team will be here to talk about 7th through 12th grade math. So please join us for one of those webinars. Again, you can find more information on the RUSD website under the Family Technology Resources tab. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Have a great night.